say it again. The gospel is not always easy. Or living the life of a believer is not always easy. But it's not complicated. Seriously, if you seek the presence of the Lord, how do we do that? Looking unto Jesus. Jesus. How do you seek His presence? Worship. Worship. Yeah, reading, reading the Bible. Getting the Bible and reading it back to Him. This is His Word. Lord, you're my shepherd. It's funny, when you, do, when you start to seek His presence as you read, and you grab the, grab the Bible and just start praying His Word to Him, guess what? It comes alive in a whole new way. We all know the Lord is with us. He said, His promise was that He'd never leave us. And so part of seeking His presence is making yourself aware that He's here. If you were to imagine Jesus in the room, somewhere here, maybe sitting down beside David or something. <laughs> yeah. If you were to imagine Him sitting there, to imagine Him sitting there would be more true than to not imagine Him there. Because He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you always the very end of the age. <coughs> So part of seeking his presence is going, you know, I'm going to make myself aware that he's here with me. Sometimes it's just by going, oh, Jesus, you're here. Oh, Spirit, you're here. Lord, you're here with me. Just making that statement to turn your mind to be aware of that. So seeking his presence, listening to his voice. He speaks in so many ways. It could be by Ivan coming and giving me a message. It could be by reading the word and going, smacking me in the head. It could be by me seeing something in nature and it reminds me of the glory of God. There's a million ways that God can speak to you, but listening to his voice, having an ear open. Has anyone been a child here? Has anyone ignored <laughs> their parents while they're saying, make your bed? And you just like, pretend that you don't hear? Yeah. All right? That's a way not to listen to his voice. So the opposite of that is being attentive to every word. And then obeying the word. Obeying the word of God. Obeying what he says to you through his word. Everything that you hear through the Holy Spirit, be it through an impression on the heart or someone else's voice or in nature, you must test it with the word. And I think Daryl and everyone else is teaching you that kind of thing. This is, this is the standard God's word. Obey it. There's blessing and obedience. And so today, I had a... <clears throat> that's actually a couple of days ago, I had a dream. It was on Sunday night or Monday morning. I knew I was going to be coming to CBI. Jenny and I are coming to CBI. And I had a dream that there was this class of students. And I wasn't the teacher. Someone else was the teacher, but I could see the teacher wanting them to, you know, discover things. And as they were discovering things, he wanted them to sh come together and share what they were discovering. But the thing is, there was a, a group of students over here and they were, they were having breakthroughs and revelations with a guitar. And there was another group of students and they... It was funny, the picture I had in my mind was a, a motorbike motor. <laughs> it's like they'd pulled out a motor and they were working on it and they were... And they were... They were learning something about God and it was powerful. And then there was another group over there and they were sort of networking and chatting and having coffee together and, and they were just so excited about what God was showing them. And it came time for the, the leader of the class to bring them together and so they could share with one another what was going on, what, what were their testimonies, what was God speaking. But he got two groups together and then there was this one group over here that were having coffee and they were like, I don't care about motors or guitars. I'm just going to have coffee. And they're excited talking to one another and, and it's sort of ignoring the, the teacher. And finally when the teacher got them to join, by the time he got them to join, this other group, they had sort of scattered off and, and the, the people with the guitar had gone over there and they didn't think what the people with coffee had, they, they didn't think that was relevant to them. 
And so you had these different groups of people and each, each testimony was very different and the Lord was speaking in such different ways and they had different ways of looking at the world and, and they thought that what you learned was not relevant to me. And so the, I saw the, the leader of the class, it was a little bit like trying to sweep up ants. Have you swept up ants before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you sweep them up. And <laughs> in Australia we often say it's a bit like herding cats. Could you imagine herding cats? <laughs> that's a funny picture, isn't it? But that's what it was like. And as I, I woke up, and this is the thing, I, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning with this, and just notice if you're waking up at a certain time in the morning with a dream or something, take note. <laughs> Write it down. Do something. I, if, I, if I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and it's, it's almost dead on four o'clock when the Lord is speaking to me, usually in the morning, I'll have a dream or something, I'll just get up and I'll spend time worshipping, praying, writing stuff down, whatever I need to do. But he dropped this word into my heart, was submission. We're in a culture that doesn't like to submit. Because it's not relevant to me. And I feel like I'm not going to take too much time here, but I feel like I want to, as a big brother to you all, <laughs> I feel like I want to bring a, a bit of a kick up the bum. I don't even know what's going on in this school. I don't know where your hearts are at. But I feel like I want to bring a bit of a word about submitting. Obviously, firstly, to the Lord. But then to leaders, to parents, to one another. Husband and wife, how do you go over that? It's not a, necessarily a popular subject, submitting. And when I say submit, you might have these negative things in your mind where someone is dominating you. No, that's not submission. Submission is being a sheep of the good shepherd. Submission to the Lord is saying, God, you are my everything. Everything I have, I owe to you. There's a scripture in James I'm going to come to with this, but I just want a few things in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's not a question, that's a statement. If you can say the Lord is my shepherd, then you can also say in whichever circumstances, in whichever need you have, I shall not want. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. That doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to have a full bank account or a flash car. No, that's not what it's about. You will have times when perhaps there's financial lack or you don't have all the things you specifically need. But guess what? As you... Depend on God's word. He brings you just what you need for that moment. Be it something tangible, something emotional, spiritual, something in the word. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Notice he makes me. If you're not listening to the Lord, sometimes he'll cause circumstances in your life so that you have to lie down and listen to him. He leads me beside still waters. I learned this a while ago, but did you know that sheep won't drink from running water? <laughs> yeah, they're too flighty, they're too nervous, and, and it's scary. So, the Good Shepherd will bring you to some water that is still that you're not going to be scared by, that you're going to have peace and be able to drink. Mm. What a good shepherd. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, <coughs> which is your protection, and your staff, which is guidance, they comfort me.
Now, this is where submission is the key to spiritual warfare. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Spend time in that. You might know that really well. You might be able to say it off by heart. But just meditate. Because if you can be a sheep before the shepherd, you can win in a spiritual battle. And something the Lord was just speaking to me again this morning was this, this is the foundation being submitted to God is the foundation of spiritual warfare. Interesting. One of the things with, another thing I found out about sheep. <coughs> <laughs> well, there was a time where his, um, Dan's uh, brother and sister, they're farmers and, and so we went and helped them one time on the farm and the, the sheep, <coughs> right, we had a we had a, it called drenching and sticking them. They had, we had to give them a shot and put them. I, after that experience, I no longer thought sheep are cute instead <laughs> of seeing them in the field. But, um, but one of the things that, you know, and it, it, what a, a shepherd will do to the sheep is because they will anoint their ears, their nose, and their eyes with the oil because the, the bugs will try to get in through those areas and they will drive them crazy. They'll, some, some bugs will go into their ears and burrow into their brain and cause them to go crazy. And what a picture that is. If we're allowing the Lord to anoint our ears, what are we thinking about? What are we meditating on? Because some of those things drive us crazy when it's not his word. And that's the way that the enemy can come in is, is through all of those, those places, right? What we're seeing, what we're hearing what we're speaking, and in this picture of the shepherd anointing our head with oil to pr protect us, you know, from those, those things. And um, what I also just love about that Psalm 23, it says, in the presence of our enemies, he prepares a table. So this is a picture that what do we get to do when the war is raging, when all of these things are going outside, Jesus says, come feast. Let me anoint your head. Let me prepare the table before you. You worship. You, you fight by feeding in my presence, by feeding at my word, by, by eating at the table that I'm preparing for you. And so when we come to him and we're worshiping, when we're reading his word, when we're seeking his presence, he's giving everything that we need. We don't have to fight. He actually fights for us. And all we have to do is hold on to his word and allow him, when he's speaking to us, are we going to respond? Because the reason why I said sheep are not cute, oh my goodness. Like these, like we had to, it was funny, you have to like kick them and knee, we were like having to knee them and get them into this line because we were giving them something that they needed, but they didn't want it. And they were fighting against it. <laughs> and they were, in, you know, they're like trampling on each other. But sometimes we can resist the shepherd giving us those things. And so I just want to encourage you today that when you get a, a word that's hard, that's a correction, it's actually... Uh, and, um, so. Yeah, so I'm going to go over to James now. <clears throat> James chapter 4, verse 1 to 10. I'm not going to read it all because so don't, we don't have time for that. <clears throat> but you can read that. But here's the thing. <coughs> if you want to stay the course as a believer and as a minister of the word, as a missionary, wherever the Lord's taking you, if you want to stay the course and not get off track, you need to stay submitted to God, to leadership, to your brothers and sisters. You need a heart that's submitted to God because if you don't, you will end up off track because guess what? God is no longer your God, you are. That's idolatry. Verse 7 in chapter 4 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Can you see how that's spiritual warfare? Can you, do you see that? Now let's go a few verses before that. Let's get some context. James is talking about what is it that causes quarrels and everything among you. It's the internal desires I have that I'm going to fight for something and I'm going to get it. <laughs> uh, 
that there's something driving my life that isn't God. We're not getting what I want. We live in an individualistic society where I have independence and I, what I think is very important, and it is, I mean, I believe in all that. But when you spend time in a collectivist culture, somewhere like India, guess what? When you earn your money, that doesn't go to you. That goes to the family. It's a whole different way, paradigm of thinking. They make group decisions too. The decisions, even to follow Jesus, happens as a family. If you start doing it as an individual, it can destroy the whole family unit. Interesting. So if you're being sent on missions and you're going to a collectivist society, even a Latin community are often very much like that. Jeez. Submit to the Lord. It's not all about us. And so here in school, I just wanted to, I don't know what you're going through, but I just want to just re release this. And if you find there's something in your heart where you've had trouble submitting to a leader, submitting to friends when they are saying, dude, you're doing this and it's affecting me in a bad way. <laughs> That's submitting to one another out of love for Christ which is then the context which goes into husbands, oh, so wives, submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives. Learning how to submit is really important. My daughter, our daughter Natanya in Australia, at the beginning of her grade 11, I just said to her, Natanya, I feel like the Lord this year is teaching you to submit. That's a, Submission is the word. And throughout that year, she had to, it was the first time that she was going to this school, and they had very strict rules. She's got a nose ring, because that's what you do in India. I can't remember which side. But, and, uh, and she's not allowed to wear that. And you've got to wear, because the uniform is so strict, you've got to wear their uniform, you, your shoes either have to be fully black or fully white, or, and you're not allowed to have your hair down, you have to have your hair up if you've got long hair. You know, all these sort of things. You can't wear a smartwatch. You can't even have your phone on at school. Like, it's really strict. Great school, though. But she had to submit to all these rules. We, were, we had a fast that year. We, we, as a church, we decided to fast. And um, we said to Natalia, we're not asking you to fast. You, I mean, you can if you like. But as a church, we are. And you're part of the church, so we'd, we'd like you to fast if you'd like to, but you, um, you've got school going on, you've got to concentrate on that, that's fine if you don't want to. She chose to fast. She goes, no, I want to. She was actually submitting to us and, and what we were doing as a family. And she finishes the fast and nothing's wow and spectacular that happens spiritually, except that she starts to make decisions that are internally motiva motivated towards her health. Which, we've been trying to get her to do that for eight years. <laughs> <clears throat> but all of a sudden, she just did it. She had a grace for it. The Lord just brought, through the obedience and submission, He brought just this blessing on her life that is actually blessing her even now. She's feeling healthy or whatever. It's very tangible, isn't it? Here's another way that there's submission. For some reason, and I, I'm not going to go into it now, but when my girls were getting earrings, they wanted one, and I said, fine, but they wanted two, and I'm like, I don't like two. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was because when I was young, there were probably girls that were a bit dodgy, and they had two or something, that's something like that. But I, <laughs> anyway, I, I said no. And uh, I said no to all the other girls, and, and <clears throat> anyway, she was away, and she was being encouraged by someone else to go, just get another one. Younger sister's done it. Dad's not here. And she goes, no, I don't want it. Because I know that Dad asked me not to. <laughs> that makes me teary every time. That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> because of her love for me, she submitted to that desire I had. She doesn't even understand it. We've had good arguments about that. <laughs> but she's actually just chosen to submit. And 
when when I see that, man, I, I want to give her anything that I, you know, I, I just love. I, it blesses my heart. She's getting that second piercing for 18th. She doesn't know. Yeah, for 18th. Then she's getting <laughs> something really nice with it. So that's that she'll love. But this is the essence of submission. How much do you love God? Love the God. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Give him everything, even your submission. Submit to your leaders. Submit to Gerald and the leadership. Submit to your leaders in school. Submit to one another when you're challenging each other about, hey dude, this is you're doing this and it's affecting me in a bad way. I'm not sure if you know this. You need to put down your weapons and just <laughs> be ready just to listen. But at the very bottom, just submit to God. I just want to just hand over to Jen. We, we don't have a lot of time, but we're going to have some questions. And uh, But Jen's going to start. She just want, I just want her to share a bit more about submission. Hmm. Um, so I've shared a little bit about my background before, but um, just so you know, um, for 10 and a half years, um, I was teaching and leading missions classes um, down in San Diego through Horizon and um, single, so I met Dan, so we've been married just five years in September, it'll be five years, so we met in India and got married, and um, Dan was uh, previously previously married, and but we met on the, on the field and got married there in India. Um, but some of this process that was going on in that, like, ever since I was, I was, I was younger, I wanted to be on mission with a husband and married, and didn't get married, the Lord didn't bring that until I was 41 years old. And I, okay, any single girls in here right now? That, <laughs> okay, any single girls that want to be married and are interested in missions? Okay, I know that this year you're probably like, I don't want to wait till I'm 41. Like, I know, I was there. Okay, I'm not saying that. But I, I remember feeling some of those things, but actually that was part of my submission to the Lord too, because I knew that God had his best. And one of the things the Lord was speaking to me about is, is that you do what I've called you to do, and I'm going to bring that man, and you're going to be so that you're like-minded and going in the right place, not forcing it. So the Lord had spoken to me a while ago, you're not going to have to go pursue, you're not going to date, you're not, you know, don't worry about that, I'm going to do that. But over the years, 41, right? Like, that's a lot of years from, you know, your 20s when you're really starting to go to the field and do all those things. But and there's times where the Lord, you know, it would come up again, and I would just be like, oh, Lord. And he's like, you know, do you trust me? Submit. I'm going to do that. But, you know, while I think what's important is that's one example of submitting to God and that he's going to bring about this stuff in your time. Submitting to the Lord when, okay, some of you right now are at the place where you're trying to figure out where are you going to, what's your next ministry, what you're going to do in life, and you, you're wanting to know all these things, and it seems like all the doors are shut right now. And, but it's, are you going to trust and submit to the Lord? Lord, I'm submitted to you, and um, even if I'm going to, what are you going to do in that waiting as you're submitting to, to the Lord? And if you're worshiping while you're waiting, is important, and if you already said, I'm going to, I'm submitting to the Lord because the Lord has spoken this to me, and I'm going to stand on that, and that's part of that James passage, that you are submitted to God, you resist the devil, the temptations is strong, you want to be married, like, well, maybe, it's kind of cute, like, he kind of loves the Lord, kind of, you know, and, but maybe if he, if I just, you know, if he just does this, you know, no, like, when compliment, that compliment, that's the, the enemy trying to pull you away from what God's best. And I just wanted to say, it was worth 100%, I can just tell you, it's 100% the worth of the wait that long, where you're waiting for the one that God has for you, and doing it the way that God has spoken to you. And it might be different than your, the people that, that, are, that are around you. And so I think that's just really um, um, important. Um, and then now that as we are, so 41, 40, so, a lot of years in, in missions, I was, I was leading mission teams and then part of mission teams and church planting teams and being a single woman missionary overseas for all that, then being married. 
And so one of the things that I had to do, you know, even in the beginning, Dan was asking, you know, because we know the scripture that you're supposed to leave and cleave your family and be joined to your, your husband. Well, I kind of left my family, you know, a long time. I've been on my own as a single, very capable, you know, missionary and leader, you know. Um, and so when we came together, Dan asked me, will you leave your single, you know, your single ministry of being a single missionary and be joined to me. And, and even in the beginning through this process, when we were even dating to um, and preparing to be married, that I had to trust and submit my heart to the Lord, but also through Dan, is when you get when through my husband, when you get married. And it's a continual thing because you you have these ideas and you have that stuff, but then as you're bringing it together, ultimately the way that the Lord has set, because as we see that in Ephesians. That because the the husband is is uh, is treating us, laying his life down like Christ loved the church, and that's sacrificially. And then as as the, as a woman, as a wife, we're called to to submit and to support those things. And that doesn't mean that we don't I don't bring my ideas and all of those things. No, we actually bring it together, you know. But ultimately, the 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 leadership that that comes. And so, are there times where there are ways that I'm not really I don't always go, I'm like, where are you going with it? Like, your idea, like, before COVID broke out, we were in Australia. I mean, we, uh, we were coming from India, just visiting Australia. But before, while we were still in India, Dan's just like, I'm just getting a sense that we're going to need to be spending some more time in Australia. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Maybe, like, a month or two because the kids were needing to get schooling there. But my focus was so in India and our church planting ministry and all the things that were going on there. But he started selling bikes and stuff. I'm like, why are you selling bikes? You love your bike, you know? And all of it, and he's just like, no, I, I feel like I was doing that. But I had, and once we got to Australia and then COVID broke out, we realized um, God was speaking to him beforehand. And I, I, was, um, I was so focused on all these other things that I needed to listen to those things. Um, did you want to speak on that? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. No. Okay. <laughs> Just about leading and submitting even. Yeah. And, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's a scary thing to have your wife say, okay, I'm not sure, but I trust you. Uh, men out there, we need to be submitted to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because that's how a wife can trust her husband and submit to him. And that is actually, yeah. I don't care if you like that or not. It's in the Bible. I believe it. That's what it says. And actually... When just the verse before wives submit to your husbands, I'll, I'll, I'll actually read it in Corinthians. Corinthians 5, talking about Ephesians. walking. Ephesians. Sorry, Ephesians. Oh, what am I thinking? Ephesians 5, <laughs> walk in love. Like there's a, there's a whole section about walking in love. And at the end of that section, it says, um, <clears throat> talks about making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. The very next verse, wives submit to your husbands. So it's not just about wives yeah. submitting to husbands, it's about us submitting to one another. And it's about a, a, this relationship where I, there's no one trying to dominate the other. Before God, Lord, we're, we're submitted to you. And when we got married, something that I was, and I, I challenge you. I challenge you to love God more than anything else yeah. in the world. I challenge you to love God more than your spouse. Yeah. That if you can love God more than that, more than anything else in the world, then you can love whatever he gives you better. better. Yeah, rightly. So you've got Ephesians talking about walking in love. Then it talks about wives and husbands, slaves and masters. And then it says, talks about spiritual warfare. Interesting. We're in a battle, guys. Sin has a desire for you. There is not one day that sin does not have a desire for you. Go and read about Cain and Abel, where God tells Cain, sin has, and his desire, the sin's desire is contrary to you. So there's, there's, there's a battle going on constantly for you. That's why we need to be submitted to the shepherd. Walk in love, submit to one another, follow the Lord. Um... 
Look, I, we, we could go to about 2 o'clock if you like. But um, uh, we have to mind there. I'm only joking. So. <laughs> so we just wanted to open up the floor. If anyone had a few questions that they'd like to ask, ask us, we could just have a bit of chat and just see what's going on. Could you repeat that thing you guys said, like your church motto about seeking? Mm. Uh, okay. Yep. Seek, seek his presence. Seek the presence of the Lord. Seek his presence. Listen to his voice. Uh, listen to his voice. Obey his word. There you go. Yes. Don't raise my hand. Yes. 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 What helped you the most with overcoming from transitioning into that? Because that's how I grew up. My mom raised me as a single mom, so she always instilled that thought on me. I was like, oh no, you don't, you don't need a man. And you need to get a good job. You need to provide for yourself. And then transitioning into getting married, it's just like, okay, no, it's completely different. So kind of like everything I thought I knew, I had to throw it out the, throw it out the window. I was like, okay, no, what does the Bible say about it? So right. that, what helped you in that whole transition to, okay, I can listen to my husband? His word. I mean, he said the, the, the scripture just clearly, clearly talks about that, and that's the biblical principle. And you know what I just love? I mean, just even marriage itself, and it, and it talks about it so much in scripture, is a picture of us in a relationship with God and the church. And so what, even, in that, even in that Ephesians passage, Paul says, and I'm not even talk, I'm not just talking about just marriage. This is an example, but yes, do this in marriage too. But this is how we are. And so as a church, as a church with, Christ. with Christ. And um, so basically it was it was just that. Um, but I think it goes back to what we we're saying is that first we're submitted to God. And I think if we have a hard time submitting to God, we're gonna have a hard time submitting to anyone, any earthly person. But we're like, oh, but if, we're, if we find we're having a hard time in submission, and if you're finding you're having a hard time in submission, maybe just check out what, what do you really think. You know, and that's what you, like, the, but that was the Holy Spirit. He was revealing to you, no, actually, we need to change your mindset of what you thought about what submission is. And that goes through his word within that. And, um, but it, it's, a, it, it's a, so it's one thing knowing it in your head and then, and then doing it. And it's a process where you have to, go, okay, no, actually, I'm actually submitted to, to God, and I'm trusting my heart to God through my husband. And, and so what I'm going to do is when I don't all, always agree with or don't understand where he's coming from, I'm just praying, going, Lord, I know that he's seeking you. Would you just give him wisdom, discernment? Would you open my understanding to open up that? How can I best come alongside? Because we're going in the same direction. We want the same things. We just need to realize that, you know, as we bring our hearts before the Lord, because sometimes we try to protect our own hearts through those those things. And so, I, I mean, that's part of some of the stuff that helped me. Has anybody heard about tithing, where they say, test the Lord in this? And, you know, it's a little bit the same. It, tithing, you think, but I, I don't know if I've got enough money. It can be a bit scary and, and whatever. But you'll find that if you tithe with an honest and with a heart that's also tithing, <laughs> that there's blessing in that. And it's not just about receiving money, it's actually, there's a spiritual blessing in that. And in the same with submission, it, it might seem scary. It might seem like, I'm not sure if this is going to work, I can't see how it's going to work, but it, through obedience we step in. And this is the thing, submission isn't about doing just what someone says. It's about what it looks like with my daughter, so when, when I'm not around, I have no idea what was going on. And she said, no. It was I'm like, gonna... I didn't agree with it, but my dad asked me it, so I'm going to do that because he she was respecting it. It's and about it having your heart right. submitting as well. It's not compliance. Yeah. It isn't compliance. Submission is about actually laying down your opinions, laying down everything and going, you know what, I'm going... I know that you're godly and I've, I've, this is the time when I'm submitting to you and I'm just, I'm going to, yeah, okay. 
I'm going to follow that. And I think that's the thing. It's trusting the Lord through that person, through your leaders, through your spouse, through um, whoever, whatever leadership you're, you're in. Because there's going to be times where you're under leadership that you know that even God, and here's the thing, there might become a time where you're, you know that God has said something so clearly to you, but your leadership is saying something different. I want to just, I want to even challenge you in when that happens, is that you, this is a biblical principle what God is even asking you to do. I'm not saying don't do, you know, but you're called to go talk to them, and but a lot of times you don't know as a, as a leader the responsibilities and things they're seeing that you're not seeing too. And sometimes God even uses, you know, like, look, let's look in the biblical principles of that, Saul. Saul and David, good king, bad king, right? Called to even submit to that. Um, and so you, there's honor, and God will honor your submission because you're going to honor your, your leadership even when you don't agree with them and how you can still do, do those things. And so I think that's probably what a lot of you will <coughs> maybe start to experience as you're at this place where you're trying to, like, okay, this is what I'm really passionate about. I want to go and do this. And all of a sudden, they're, they're sticking you and cleaning the bathrooms. And you're like, ah! You know what I mean? That's actually the refining. That's the refining time. Or, you know, you, wanted, you had some ministry on your mind. And they're like, actually, no, right now, that's not. It's actually something totally different. And what you do in that time, I think, if you're going to honor your leadership and go, you're trusting your heart and what God has said to you through them, and you start praying for the leaders. You pray for your, your heart and mind that we have the right attitude as we go through that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, Jenny, right? Yep. Okay, I know you mentioned some of your testimony about like being a missionary and stuff. Um, Danny might be able to answer this question too. But like um, starting out and then like actually like going and like being a part of like church planting and stuff. Um, what was the hardest part of that, um, being single and stuff? And I'm guessing you were also good people still. But, um, and what, what was the best part of that also, um, in, in, in both of your like missionary experiences? So, so, the, so, so to clear the question, what's the, the hardest part about church planting? Right, you like <coughs> being, being single? Sure, yeah. And um, actually being a part of a team and being kind of not. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a hard question. Um, probably it's the hardest, the hardest things probably, this is the stuff we're talking about now, people. <laughs> and you know, uh, even on, on the mission field, probably the hardest what we've seen a lot too is that a lot of struggle is the people have with other missionaries, other workers, and those those things. That can be a real because why discipleship is messy. Discipleship is also some of the best things and some of the hardest things. And as you start to even disciple, um, you know, because we're we're in an area where like they never even heard the name of Jesus, so it's unreached, unengaged people groups. And basically, as we, as we go in, we disciple them to the Lord. And, and here you are, there's times where you poured your, your heart and your, your soul into, into, into people. And then all of a sudden, you know, just because we're people and we all have sin issues, that there's, there's conflict, conflict that happens and there, there can be breakups and, and um, going, you have to agree to disagree and go your separate way. We see Paul, Paul, Paul had it with Tim, um, Silas. Yeah. No, Barnabas. Barnabas. Sorry. Yeah, Barnabas and Mark. Well, yeah, and Mark. Barnabas and Mark. That's what. But you see later that they reconciled. Paul goes, bring them back. He's buying out the Bible. They've worked, worked those things out. But that's the hardest thing because it's heart issues and people issues and discipleship. You're pouring your life in and misunderstanding each other. And, and I think that what's important is, is to continue to, um, yeah, just be bringing your heart before the Lord on those well, things. You know, and this is the thing. When you submit to the Lord, you become more like Him. Yeah. And He can deal with anyone. It's amazing. God deals with every single one of us, and we're all, you know, and we're all different. And uh, and I think that the 
more that we submit to him, the more we become like him. And like Jesus, we're able to deal with some, some, someone or something that's really difficult in a more gracious way. Uh, so that's... Yeah. And I, I think along with that is forgiveness. I think forgiveness is a key for everything because forgiveness is at the heart of, heart of the gospel. That's what it's all about, right? Jesus forgave us. So what is the enemy always wanting us to do? Get in argument, you know, why is there fights and arguments around you? Because we're not getting our own way. <laughs> you know, that's basically what he's saying there. And that's what happens when you're on the field. That's what happens here. Probably you guys have experienced it. Someone has said something. You've, you're in an emotional state. You're tired. All of these things are flaring up. Your, your flesh starts to rise up, and all of a sudden there's a fence. And we need to be quick to forgive. We need to be quick to reconcile. Because if we don't, that's where the enemy comes in. And I think that's what the enemy attacks all the time, is relationships, and because it wants to, us to hold on to forgiveness. But I've also seen that as you work through forgiveness and reconciliation and all of those things in those relationships, and actually it's some of the greatest fruit that you see. Too. How would you stay encouraged during your single season? That's a great question. Um, it's um, holding on to his promises, for sure. Um, and so as I was praying, I kept, I kept praying. I turned it into prayer. You know, when, there was a, when, that, was a, when that longing was there, I go, Lord, thank you that you have someone. And I would start praying for him. I'd be praying for specific things. And the Lord would speak to me. He gave me some promises about it. Um, and so I just had to, in that moment go back to that, and that was my anchor, his promises. So if you, while you're waiting, as you're praying, ask the Lord, pray about your future spouse, and Lord, what's a promise I can hold on to? How do you want me to deal with this during this time, you know? Um, because even while I was here in the, in the States and I was teaching different things, you know, once you, you, you start getting a little bit older, you never want to want to try to set you up and do all these things, but I knew that that's not what God had for me to do. But that was for me. And see, you've got to get that from the Lord, too. How, how does he want you to pursue, pursue those things? And then you stand on to that, that word, and you hold on to that um, at their anchor uh, point. So that's where I just turned it, I turned it into prayer. And um, I, I talked with people about it, too, when it was, oh, there were times where I'm like, you know, really, God? It, did you really say that? And yes. And then other people would encourage me, speak into me, pray for me about those things. I think something else Jen did too was that, you know, with temptation, you can, it's a, you can walk close to the edge of the cliff or you can move far yeah. away from the edge of the cliff. And I know in Jenny's mindset, she moved far away from the edge of the cliff. She didn't dabble with anything that could cause to, her heart to yeah. flare up in, in for more, with more desire, if you know yeah. what I mean. But this whole idea of praying for your spouse, I think, is so important. Because if you pray for them, you will recognize them. And they'll recognize you. And uh, what, a, what a wonderful thing to be, to be sewing in to the person that's going to be a spouse. Um, and it's true. Uh, it, you know, every day, I'm like, I'm telling you, it's good to wait. It's good to have for the guy God has for you. Because every day, I'm just like, wow, I totally prayed for that. I'm so thankful. I'm like... That's exactly like, and then there's things that the Lord knew that I desired, but I didn't even know how to articulate it. And God's like, here. <laughs> so that's my encouragement to just wait on those two. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. What are you guys doing in ministry now? Are you in Australia? Are you guys going to go to India? Um, well, right now, so we're currently, we're pastoring like a small like country church in, in Australia because when lockdown happened, um, I guess just to, to share the, a quick story, I'll try to be quick, I guess we'll do it. Okay. Do, well, um, just tell, well, tell them what we're doing and then yeah. we'll go back to the story. So we're, the Lord just really spoke to us that we're to pastor this church um, in, in um, Australia. And because total lockdown was happening in Australia, we couldn't even get out. And so we're basically, like the Lord, through some series of things, showed us that we were to pastor this church. We still, before we left, because we thought we were just visiting, we actually had just completed, um, we do church planting training 
like for indigenous church planting movements. So that looks a little bit different. And um, what that looks like is um, I've been trained in doing oral Bible storytelling. It's an inductive study of how you, it's basically you're learning these, these uh, Bible stories, um, very accurate, but you have it in your heart. And then you can, and through asking questions, you're engaging and having conversation over God's word. And, and so it's like an adaptive study method in oral fashion because most people in, in India and in where I was in, in Africa before, um, they're non-readers. A lot of them can read or barely read. Um, but even those who can read, their preferred way of learning and communicating is in an oral fashion. And so um, it's really a great, a great method that we do. So we, we use that as, um, as the Bible because if we give them a Bible, they're not going to be able to read it. Uh, we've used before audio players, but there's something that audio players is just so that they can actually get it into their hearts and, and use that. So we, we take them through like a short-term discipleship um, lessons of, in the Bible, and then we'll take them into long-term discipleship, and then also just as we go into, we basically, if you look at Luke 10, if you're interested in more, I can tell you more about it later too, but Luke 10 is a great example of what we kind of do in preparing our church planters and, and sending them out and going into a household speaking peace, which is the gospel of peace. If they're open, they stay there. And in India, um, once you, so when, when you're doing this in the house, as what Dan was talking about earlier, they make these decisions about following Jesus together. And immediately you have a church in the house. And you get 40 to 50 to 60 people in one house, easy. And um, so that's some of the church planting that we're doing in India. And so we're training and equipping national believers. And, um, and so we're right now, since we're in, in uh, Australia, um, we just kind of do some follow-up on the phone. But we're trying to, now that the restrictions have been easing, that we're going to try to get back in there in June. So, so we're kind of going back and forth. <clears throat> God's expanded our ministry during this time. Yeah, so there are three teams that we part, pastor and lead that are in India, and, and they are doing church planting, and, and then in Australia we're pastoring. But even what we're doing now is part of our ministry. Uh, our, our, we have a mission statement, and I would encourage everyone to think about what is my mission statement for life? life. And so then when you come together as a married couple, then you let that go and you form it together and go, as a couple, what is our vi mission statement? And ours is to awaken and shepherd, ignite the nations to live passionate lives of worship through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God. And so we, so, our ministry in, in India is very much that. We're leading, shepherding, and while we haven't been there, we're actually doing a lot of pastoring with them <laughs> over phone calls and, and stuff like that, but hopefully more equipping soon. So like just awaken is, that's evangelism, people who don't know the Lord, Sharing, you know, so wherever we go, we can awaken people to who God is. And, um, and then to shepherd them, which is discipleship. And then to ignite them is we, a lot of times we can see the different gifts and callings that people have in their life. And we're called to, you know, fan into playing the gift of God, which is, which is in them. And so that's kind of what we do. And so wherever God takes us, that's what we're, we're going to do. I just want to leave you with one thought as we wrap up because I think 9.30 is when you finish, is it? I think the most important thing that we could all do is become a student of the voice of God. That's, being a student means I've never arrived. I've never got it all sort of figured out, but I'm constantly learning how he speaks to us. You see, John 6 talks about how the words of Jesus are spirit, but like their life. Peter says to Jesus, where else do we go? You alone have the words of life. You know, the word of God is life. <laughs> his word to us. So be a student of his voice. He will speak to you in a zillion different ways. And he'll often change the channel. <laughs> you might be hearing the Lord as you're reading, but then... You'll go through a season where you're not hearing the Lord so much that way, but it might be during worship or something. So imagine that there's a channel you listen to God to. He does that so that you, there can be greater intimacy. It's not about a method. It's not about doing all the right things. It's about love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. You know?
And so become a student of his voice. Worship him. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Um, you know, if you, have, if you have any other questions and things like that, we are going to be tonight, um, going to be at the services tonight at church, on Wednesday night services, or an after. As well. And um, if you want one of our prayer cards, we have prayer cards, and um, our email's on the back there if you want to connect and have any other questions, and um, we'd be happy to, to do that. So, um, now let's pray for them. Yep. Let's stand, hey? Thank <laughs> you.